Football is a game about positions. Unlike modern-day basketball, where many skills are interchangeable throughout positions, football requires specialty from each player. Each position has its own unique body type that requires a different skill set from its players. Many of these players have been focused on the single position they play for their entire lives. They have to look at the game of football from the tunnel of the position they play in order for the picture to become whole for the entire team. Oregon has its own strengths and weaknesses for its positions going into next season. After spring football, it's apparent that the Ducks have potential to succeed at every position, but it's some more than others. We've considered all the options and debated what position groups fit within the ranking of every unit heading into the offseason. Here is our ranking of positions ahead of the 2018 season. The special teams gets knocked down to the bottom of the list, not because of a lack of skill, but because too much is unknown right now. Oregon lost one of the best kickers in program history in Aiden Schneider to graduation. The team also lost longtime long snapper Tanner Carew. Carew will be replaced by either Devin Melendez, who hasn't seen the field since the 2014 season, or true freshman Carson Battles. It seems most of the special teams will depend on the effectiveness of sophomore Adam Stack. He was the full-time punter for Oregon last season, and is currently the team's first option to replace Schneider as the starting kicker. He was an effective punter in his freshman season, so it should not be an issue for him to continue that in 2018. If he is able to replace Schneider as kicker effectively, the special teams could end up higher in position rankings later on. Dylan Mitchell came on rapidly to close the 2017 season and looks like a future star in 2018. Justin Herbert missing five games was a big reason that the receiving core only hauled in 18 touchdowns in 2017, but there is still an issue of depth. Oregon may be returning four of its top five receivers but the depth chart looks shaky outside of that. With Jalen Hall's status with the program up in the air, there's even more of a concern. Oregon saving grace could be graduate transfer to Barry Hines. He had more receiving yards and touchdowns than anyone on Oregon's roster last season and could immediately become the go-to option for Justin Herbert. Cornerback Thomas Graham expects to take on a bigger leadership's role this spring. Oregon has something special in Thomas Graham Jr. At cornerback, who was a starter for most of his freshman year, but there are plenty of questions in the team's past defense. The team will have to find replacements for Arion Springs and Tyree Robinson, who both landed on NFL rosters as undrafted free agents. Oregon's experience took a hit this offseason, and it could affect the secondary as a whole. It seems that the Ducks will have a steady rotation of both youth and experience in its secondary. Loss of longtime starters has opened spots that are up for grabs by pretty much anyone. A true freshman could work his way into the rotation over a redshirt senior. There is plenty of talent, and Oregon's secondary could have a high ceiling. But ultimately, the loss of two of its most important starters gives it a low floor as well. The future of Oregon running backs took a hit with the departure of Jamal Elliott last week, but it shouldn't have too much of an effect on the regular rotation. The starter will almost certainly be redshirt senior Tony Brooks James, who has been thought of for years as the successor to Royce Freeman. After Brooks James, however, there are questions. The next two options are likely senior Taj Griffin and redshirt freshman C.J. Verdell. 
Griffin has been in and out of the rotation for years, so there's a decent chance he gets back in with running backs not being as deep as it has in recent years. Verdell impressed throughout spring, and could ride that momentum into the fall in order to possibly take Griffin's place as the backup running back. Jordan Scott looks to take on an even bigger role in year two. Oregon's defensive line features a top NFL prospect in Jalen Jelks. He has dominated offensive lines during his tenure at Oregon and will be the outright leader of Oregon's defensive line. Jordan Scott also impressed during his freshman year, and will likely be able to hold his spot as the nose tackle on Oregon's line. There are many options for who will play opposite Jelks once the regular season begins. With the other two spots pretty much locked up, it will likely be a three-way battle between Austin Failu, Gary Baker, and potentially Malik Young. Oregon isn't traditionally known for its defensive line, but 2018 will have both size and depth. Brady Aiello, left, and Jake Hansen, center, take instruction from Mario Cristobal during fall camp. The offensive line will have no trouble replacing its longtime starter Tyrell Crosby. Oregon has been molding its offensive line for the past two seasons. Almost the entire lineup will consist of redshirt juniors who received plenty of playing time over the past two years. I, in terms of experience, Oregon is one of the best in the Pac-12. How that translates onto the field is yet to be seen, but the line has gone through the growing pains of the last two seasons and developed into something to be proud of. Expect these guys to keep the pressure off of Justin Herbert next season. Despite the backup roles being filled by mostly unproven players, Oregon's quarterbacks deserve to be among the best in the team because of Justin Herbert. Herbert goes into his junior season with expectations high. Many believe he will be among the best quarterbacks not just the Pac-12, but the entire nation. He is gaining hype as a potential first or second round pick in the 2019 NFL Draft should he choose to declare. Herbert is a flat-out star, and he will prove it again this season. Behind Herbert will be Braxton Burmeister, who now has about a half a season of playing experience at the collegiate level. This will surely help him to cut down on mistakes that plagued him when he was forced into the action. Tyler Shaw has also looked strong in the spring, potentially leaving room for him to become the starting quarterback a couple years down the road. Troy Dye, left, and Jalen Jelks, right, seem like strong picks to be among the best in the Pac-12 at their positions this season. The best mix of experience and talent comes at the linebacker position for the Ducks. Troy Dye will go into the 2018 season as Oregon's top defensive player for the third consecutive season. He's one of three Oregon linebackers who seemed to have a starting spot locked up, along with senior Justin Hollins and junior Lamar Winston Jr. Outside of those three, Oregon has several options for the final spot. Former walk-on Kaulana Pelu impressed this spring after coming off a season-ending ankle injury. He will surely be in consideration for a starting spot for his senior year. Outside of Apelu are players such as redshirt sophomore Keith Sims, also coming off an injury, and four-star freshman Adrian Jackson. Oregon may have some issues at depth at certain positions, but linebacker is not one of them. The Ducks might have the best group of linebackers in the conference next season.